Hey guys, in this tutorial we're going to be doing a recreation of a top-down 2D shooter with um, the player actually shooting off uh, a shotgun and, and it's going to basically create a, um, a spread shot. Let me go and open up the finished example. If you notice right here, if you left click, he'll fire off around 10 bullets and a cone shape so it spreads out just very much like a, a shotgun spread would. Um, also if you notice he's got his little movements and if you play close attention he is actually turning with the mouse. So he's actually facing towards the mouse whenever I move the mouse around. And then, of course, with the keys, you can you can move him around. Let me go and shut this down so we can get uh, started on this. And uh, the very first thing that you're going to want to do if you don't already have them created is, of course, create your player. Um, I made him 32 by 32. You can make him whatever size you want and name him whatever you want. Uh, you're going to need an enemy just copied the player for myself and dropped them in here and renamed it enemy again yours is going to probably look different and last is going to be the bullet um, now again depending on the size of your game it might be bigger or smaller um, I don't know but for all extensive purposes mine is 5x5 five five, seen as uh, a lot of my sprites right here are 32 by 32 or it's supposed to be about 32 by 32 sorry Go and create just a, a plain room for you to test it in. And then we're going to go ahead and start going into objects. And the first object that we're going to create is actually going to be the player. Or actually, let's go and make it the enemy because the enemy doesn't actually use anything. Um, for the enemy, just attach the enemy sprite to it, rename it enemy, and go ahead and drop him in the room wherever you want doesn't matter where you drop them. Um, now let's go ahead and go back to the player and in the player we're gonna have three different events we're gonna have create an alarm and a step and we're gonna start off with the create event go ahead and add the create event go over to control go to execute code and just drag it over and once you drag it over it'll actually open up for you and then the create event, what we're going to do is we're going to set up a variable. And it's going to be called can shoot. We're going to set it to true. And basically what this is going to do is going to tell the game if the player can actually shoot or not. And I'll actually explain this here uh, momentarily. But that's all you're going to need for the create event. We're going to skip over the alarm event. because uh, I want to get into this type of event. There's a, the variable that we used in the create event is actually used in this type of event. Sorry. That probably sounded a little confusing. But in the step event, you would do the same thing. Drag the execute code over and it'll open up. And the reason I wanted to skip over the alarm is because we actually have to make a check first. Um, and this is going to be the check right here. And it's going to check to basically see if the player, whenever he hits the left mouse button, if he's allowed to shoot. Because you don't necessarily want him to just kind of hold down the button. Or I guess if you do... Um, I'll show you here in a moment, but you don't necessarily want them to, to hold down the button and just have like crazy spray going all over the place. Um, let me see if I can actually take this out real quick and, and show an example of what I mean. Okay, yeah, see, if, you, if I hold down the button, he just continuously shoots nonstop. and I don't necessarily want that so that's what the can shoot variable is for is to check that and I'll show you how to do that here in a moment basically what you're gonna do is if can shoot equals true and if mouse check button mouse button left then you're gonna execute the code in these brackets now if you notice something a little different here I've got a different code it's called repeat and basically what repeat is going to do is you type in repeat and then you would put in 
whatever number you would want, whether it be, you know, 5, 15, uh, we'll go ahead and set it back to 10 because that's, that's what I wanted it at. And what it's going to do is it's going to re repeat the code after it 10 times. So that's how we actually get the spread shot from the shotgun if we let me go and start it up again. If you notice when I fire, you can't necessarily count them all at the, um, while they're flying through the air. But what it does is it creates, again, the ten different shots flying across uh, the room. And whichever ones hit the enemy, of course, deal damage to that enemy. If they don't hit that enemy, then they'll go past it. And if there's somebody else behind it, then it'll hit them. But let me explain a little bit here. Uh, in the instance create, we're going to actually be using a... Um, function called length there and basically it's let me, let me go back here and what it's actually going to do is it's actually going to return the variable for x and if you go into the wiki it'll give you um, a better explanation of it um, if I were to sit down and try and explain it I'm sure I would probably confuse you so I don't want to do that um, just go ahead and like I said um, look at the code real quick go ahead and type it in and basically the direction here the reason I put direction in here is so that whenever it creates it will create it in a little different direction that's thus creating the spread effect but go ahead and copy this down off here and then we're going to go ahead and set can shoot to false and we're going to set the first alarm or uh, well, yeah, the first alarm. First alarm start off at zero. We're going to set it to 45, which actually I don't like it being at 45. We're going to set it at 30. Um, that's my room speed at the moment, so it'll be essentially one second. And again, what that does is it'll stop me from firing continuously. It'll kind of give it like a pause, almost like he's uh, loading another round into the chamber. Alright, now in order to get your character to point towards the mouse, actually it's rather simple, what you're going to want to put in is image angle equals point direction, and then you're going to put in x comma y comma mouse underscore x comma mouse underscore y. And basically it's telling it my X and my Y should reflect mouse X or the direction or yeah the direction and the angle should reflect mouse X and mouse Y so again it gets your character pointing towards the mouse rather than just kind of sitting there in one solid position and the next one here is actually the movements and we actually went over the movements uh, before but this is just in case somebody's just watching this video alone and what you're gonna do is you're gonna put in if keyboard check VK left VK underscore left and what that is is virtual key underscore left or and you can either type in or or you can actually use that right there which is the the two little standing lines I forget what they're called and it will basically create the the same spot or it will uh, create the or statement then you put in keyboard check or a and, and the reason this is an end is because you want to check whether or not they've pressed either the left arrow key or the A arrow key. Now if they've pressed either one, then what you're going to want to do is make sure that the place next to them is free. And that's why you put the and there. And place free. And it's going to do a check for x minus 4 comma y. And if it is free then the x of the character of course is going to move x minus equals 4
and the same is done for right arrow key and D W and up and S and down you can always pause it here and copy it down in case you have any kind of trouble um, just trying to implement the code and that's really gonna be it about um, about the player the next thing that we're gonna want to do is actually go into the bullet and the bullet is gonna have some variables as well and at the very beginning what you're gonna want to do is add in a create event do the exact same thing go to control drag in execute some code it'll pop open and what you're going to want to put is move towards point and what this is going to do is it's going to tell it hey move towards this point on the screen but only at the beginning so it will let it go just like a boat it won't necessarily because if you were to put this if you were to put this code into the step event it would continuously more or less follow your mouse around and we don't want that so move towards point mouse x comma mouse y comma and then whatever speed you want it set to i've got it set to 25 you can lower it raise it whatever and then we're going to put direction equals obj player period image angle minus 7 plus random 14 now this is a another thing that's actually going to help and this is a, again what it does is it'll kind of create it in a um, like I said the, the spread shot it'll make it to where it kind of creates them separately just along the front of the character and then they'll move out in the cone shape it'll give them the direction we're going to create a collision destroy up against the enemy so once it hits the enemy it'll just destroy itself really simple and then the last one because we don't want it to continuously just have these bullets floating around in space it'll start eating up a lot of memory and it'll start slowing down so what you want to do is you want to add in an event that is outside room event and it's really simple it just checks it to see if it's outside the room and if it is it destroys it gets rid of it and it'll clean up a little bit more of um, of the screen so it doesn't lag it doesn't get uh, over cumbered over encumbered sorry But that's it guys, if you followed the steps, you should have exactly what I do, or what I have, sorry. <laughs> Clearly I can't speak this morning. And that right there is how you create your top-down movement with a little player firing off a spread shot like you would in a shotgun. Uh, the next one, I think I'm going to go ahead and do a, uh, a health bar that we can actually have floating over the character or over the enemy and it'll, you know, recede as uh, they get hit, whatever else. Or I might do a um, random enemy movement, which means when the player isn't around them, they'll just kind of wander around and, you know, go look around on their own, give them a little bit more realistic feel to them. But uh, I hope y'all enjoyed this. Um, if y'all have any questions, just go and let me know. Be sure to check out some of the other videos, and have a good one.